Innovative Industrial Properties, IIPR stock. This is a REIT, and it's under attack from a short seller. And I wanted to kind of break everything down to show you what I'm looking at and why this is really kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the short seller is saying that basically these guys are pretending to be an, a REIT, that they are a de facto bank, and that this business model isn't going to work out too well for them. At the same time, there's uh, Parallel tried to go public, uh, merging two companies together. That failed, and they're, uh, the, the short sellers are starting to attack because of that, they're saying that their position has degraded. Let's jump in the computer. I want to show you a couple of things just to kind of put everything into perspective and maybe you can see what I'm seeing and eh, maybe it's not so bad. Let's check it out. All right. First thing we see here is IIPR. It was trading about 200 bucks down to 150, down 50 bucks off 200. That's about a 25% drop. That's, that's decent. Now there's two things here. Number one is this investment thesis, the short selling, is there merit to that? Number two, which I'm going to chime in on this one, what about interest rates going higher? Thing is, interest rates going higher would slow down the pace of real estate, the price increases and things like this. So if these guys, Blue Orca Capital, did nothing, it's very possible that a lot of these REITs are going to go down anyway. So they may be kind of bringing everything together at the same time. But at the same time, I want to kind of chime in on that whole concept of them being a pseudo bank let's move forward just a little bit this is iipr that we're looking at this is the dow jones reit uh sort of an index and as you can see it is significantly outperformed the other one or has it here they are simultaneously on a percentage basis and actually if you look at it um the Dow Jones went up about 60%, whereas IIPR went up about 140% at its peak. And you can see right around December, right when we started having some real big uh, concerns over interest rates, both the Dow Jones REIT and um, IIPR came down significantly. So when you look at this chart here, granted over the past couple of days, um, IPR has dropped significantly, but it was actually outperforming the Dow on a percentage basis. So I'm not exactly certain that uh, when, when you look at those first charts, if you don't bring them together simultaneously, you don't actually see the full picture there. Now, what is a REIT? And this is important. A REIT is a real estate investment trust. It's encoded in tax. It's an investment vehicle that can invest in basically one thing, real estate, period. But what type of real estate? It could be uh, apartment buildings, office buildings, whatever. It's real estate where you're getting uh, revenue from either rents, mortgages, interest rates from mortgages, things of this nature. All right. They're allowed to invest in real estate. Treasury and cash is pretty much limitation. Um 90% of the profits must be returned to the investors via dividends. So that investment vehicle basically dictates what a REIT is. IIPR operates under that. Now, one of the things that IIPR does, and I have no problem with this, I see this is just a function of them being a REIT. They specifically target cannabis stocks or cannabis companies. They'll walk up to them and say, listen, you're $1 million building out there. We'll buy it from you for $1.2 million. You know, so you're going to get a 20% increase. We're going to overpay for it. But we're going to be your landlords. And we're going to get anywhere from 11 to 14% yield on a rent basis for a long-term lease. You can do whatever you want with that 200 that we kicked up over the value of what your property is actually worth. Now, will that investment thesis fall apart or degrade as Blue Orca Capital likes to call it? Maybe only if IIPR's portfolio, the whole thing kind of falls apart but they have plenty of business that's actually doing well. Now, of course, there's the parallel deal, 
my assumption from what I've read about Parallel is they're not going bankrupt. That they just, they went out there, tried to do an IPO, merging two companies and said, we're just going to be a kajillion dollar company, this, that, the other thing. Investors balked and said, no, we don't see it. Because of that, uh, they didn't go IPO. They didn't merge. There was two companies that were trying to merge simultaneously. Um, and because of that, this is one of the foundations where Blue Orca is sitting there saying, yeah, you guys aren't really going to do well in the long run. But this is such a small, I mean, IIPR has like $1.3 billion in assets, something like that. They're run by two separate individuals. If you go to their website, you can read some information on these guys, real brief, um, who've been in the industry for a minute. Seems to me they're doing pretty well. The company is profitable. In fact, at these prices, you're getting a yield of about 3%, which is pretty good when you consider the 10-year treasury is just about 2%, 2.5% right now. So you're beating the 10-year yield investing in real estate. And here's something I want to chime in on. What do we all know about real estate? They just don't make it anymore. Real estate continues to be one of the best investments you can get involved in. If you look historically at REITs, if you look at historically at dividend uh, producing income, things like this, REITs is one of the best investments you can make. So when you have a company who's targeting cannabis companies who initially may need a lot of upfront cash, they, they bought everything they could. They raised millions and then went too far. All right. So now they're sitting on a whole bunch of uh, equity. They need cash. And all of a sudden, IIPR shows up and says, we'll give you even more equity. Your building's worth a million. We'll give you 1.2. But here's your future rent. But we'll take care of everything going on inside the business, meaning climate control. IIPR is on the hook for climate control, things like this in the processing and in the growth facilities. That's huge. Now, all of a sudden, you have a company who can free up its capital, free up responsibility, and actually pocket a little bit. But they're going to pay years upon years upon years. Now, I kind of went backwards in time and looked at some of the uh, announcements that IIPR had, and I didn't see anybody that really uh, bulked out and that they didn't make their money meaning any companies went bankrupt and they they weren't you know they had to eat it or anything like that but keep in mind this is all real estate so given that the ability for that even IIPR to spin it out dump the asset is a possibility so it won't be a 100% loss on that one particular building they may take a 10 20% haircut big flippity flip they're making 11 to 14% annual yield off of rents. They can take a hit every once in a while and still be profitable. But then there's the interest rate situation. When we look at the charts, you can see that there was a drop in both IIPR and the Dow REIT. The Dow REIT is basically a, an index of REITs. Interest rates, as they move higher, is going to slow the pace of real estate acquisitions. Real estate prices are probably still going to go up, but not nearly as fast. Then maybe they do take a small dip, but eventually real estate continues forward. So even if IIPR or any REIT sits on a loss for a moment, it'll only be a couple years before the acquisition price that they took is gobbled up by advances in prices. So when IIPR walks up to a company and says, fine, we'll overpay today, but you're going to overpay to us for about five years, maybe 10. IIPR isn't really sitting on any losses anytime soon because, I mean, look at the price of real estate over the past few years. It is skyrocketing fast. Granted, interest rates are going higher. That will address that one particular issue. Still, all IIPR has to do is just hold out for a little bit and they'll get there. In the meantime, you see a lot of companies that are, uh, a lot of these cannabis companies just raised a bunch of cash. There are some very healthy cannabis companies who are, who are refinancing as time goes through. 
over the past, say, 18, 12, 18 months, a lot of debt refinancing has occurred. These companies are not, generally speaking, hurting in that regards. Yes, granted, there's some OTC smaller cannabis stocks that are taking it. They bit off way more than they can chew, and they need cash. But that's not True Leaf. That's not Green Thumb. Cure Leaf? Nope. Given that, I don't see Blue Orca Capital's thesis that they're acting like a pseudo bank and it's going to erode really being all that valid. Like I said, it seemed like an investment thesis that was desperately searching for a rationale. Nonetheless, I could see all REITs falling in price simply because of the future uh, uh, interest rate outlooks. Blue Orca, if they would have said just that one thing, yeah, we see IIPR coming up. They're a little overpriced. Look at them compared to the Dow, just like I put these charts up here. They're a little overvalued comparatively. We think the price is going to come down somewhat. All right, you win. Truth is, man, you're up 25%. If your uh, most recent entry point was just right there, I say great. But I don't know that you should sit on those profits and think they're just going to keep on going and going and going. Because IIPR is profitable. They're getting yields of 11 to 14 percent. Someone who's savvy. Remember, the two guys running this show at IIPR, they've been in the business. They know people. One of them sold one of his companies to BlackRock or somebody like that. I'm like, okay, these guys are known. They could easily pick up the phone and say, listen, we're a steal. Step in, buy a bunch of stock. We'll issue you some new stock or whatever. Uh, warrants, options, whatever. They could raise some capital real fast. They could do whatever they need to do. They could get acquired and raise capital. And all of a sudden, this stock price goes through the roof. Blue Orca... They're nailed to a wall at that point. Nonetheless, I don't see what IIPR, their business model, I don't see this as being a pseudo bank. All sorts of companies kind of do this thing to individual homes and stuff like this. They'll give you loans above the purchase price so that you can remodel, things like that. This isn't unheard of. That's basically the same thing that uh, IIPR is doing. Then there's that one final thing, cannabis federal legalization. IIPR is already profitable. What happens if we get cannabis federal legalization? One of the reasons why I don't, invest, uh, I don't follow IIPR on a regular basis is simply because it's not a pure pay, play cannabis stock. It's a REIT. By law, they derive all their income from real estate investments. I want to get involved in pure play, hands-on. I want to see that growth. That's what I focused on. I got about 105 companies on my website that I'm following on a regular basis. I don't need to look elsewhere. Guys are always like, you should look at this one. Why? I got 105 companies. I don't need 106. Um, given that, with federal legalization just around the corner, that just solidifies the business plan of every company that IIPR is involved in. So while Blue Orca could pull off a pretty nice trade, and it looks like they might be up about 25%, I don't know that they should sit on that and think that they're going to get another 5, 10, 15, 20% more. I don't see IIPR crumbling. In fact, this might be a buy on the dip moment. If you like my content, I want to say thanks for hitting the like button and following. We'll see you in the next video.